Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Political Vigilante. Um, I am here talking. I'm actually in the Chicago area, and I'm talking to uh, Kai Christian Mutler, who is in Germany. I know it's late for you, my friend. I appreciate you dealing with me. I just did another interview with another uh, <laughs> Patreon supporter. Folks, you get to do this at the $25 level. We can Skype wherever you are on planet Earth and uh, talk about <laughs> whatever you'd like to talk about it's been fascinating doing this i get to meet all these fantastic progressives from all over the planet so um today last time we talked a lot we've you know um we've talked about the uh, health in germany i know in the past but you wanted to talk today about how you became basically uh a not a paramedic or emt but like a a trained first responder uh, I'm in, uh, may, may I interrupt? Sure. I'm on the way. The decision is as fresh as you can get. I made oh. this decision uh, last December. Okay, so and recently. And started the process. So what, well, what What made you decide to do this, and what's the process? Um, it's quite a funny story. I, uh, so let's start it that way. Uh, once upon a time, not so far... Uh, 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 not so long ago, and in a not so far away city, a good friend of mine uh, was on a uh, had a booth on a Christmas market and asked me to help her. And I said yes, of course. And we did a we did we did the time there. We sell a lot of stuff, had nice chats, and. Uh, Near the end, I saw blue flashlights and no uh, no acoustic signal, which is quite normal if you are uh, uh, away <clears throat> uh, on your tour in markets like this. You should know, for seven years I worked at a medieval market in the, let's say, guardian security-like team, but not as a professional but as a member of the association, and I guided uh, a gazillion ambulances to the to the spot at the market and away. So absolutely routine situation for me, no stress whatsoever. I was in the booth, which in the end was not the best decision. But I thought, okay, I'm that might be the safest uh, place for me. Now, you must know that the street was quite narrow and the booths were constructed with a, let's say, hatch. Okay. You get the picture. Yeah. So, the ambulance comes absolutely slowly, fantastic driving by the driver, because a lot of people, uh, although it was bad weather, but we had a... Uh, uh, we had a hot wine booth in direct in front of us and uh, some food booth with very tasty food. And so we had a lot of people around there, especially children and even toddlers mm -hmm. jumping around. And the ambulance comes and slowly and really they, the, the people are lunatics, lunatics. Because they don't go, go to the side and uh, the driver maneuvered from left to right, from left to right. And then there was sort of free space. The driver just tipped slightly the, the accelerator, but yeah, four and a half metric tons. First, uh, oh, first gear, a lot of momentum and it is the classic ambulance construction as you have in the US. A with, I don't know, I'm, I'm not clear. Well, you, you get the picture. Yes. So, ambulance. Started, 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 and touched the hatch. Well, it cracked. I got a hit in my back of my head. And I saw stars, mm -hmm. not figurative, but literally because yeah. the roof was away. Right. What happened? 
Well, the ambulance crushed our booth. Completely folded. Collapsed. Boom. Unfortunately, my friend and I, myself, we were in the booth. Which is a bit disturbing. <laughs> you can believe me that. Right. But luckily, nothing happened. Uh, right after the incident, a couple of hands grabbed me, pulled me out of the smash booth, and I was quite disorientated, which might be not so surprising. Right. <laughs> but then uh, the, uh, the, the crew disembarked, and I thought, what the fuck? Sorry, <laughs> you might beep it out, but uh, am I in the kindergarten? Because the driver seems to be very young, and right, I was right with this, this assumption, and the, the second crew member seems to be even younger. And also that assumption uh, figured out to be right. So, okay, they asked me, did, uh, did something happen? And I get uh, hit in the back of the head. I said that, they said, okay, go, uh, go in the impatience department or in the back of the car. We will check it up. And I saw, and then idiots around there were shouting. So, you don't know me very well, but if I hear something like this, I bark back and say, shut up, let them go, it was an accident, shit happens, and back off. Something like this. Because if I see something like this, and uh, it is disturbing uh, ambulance personnel, I got fired. I generally get fired up, and I... So Go this forward. made you want to be a first responder? Yes, uh, not yes. It, it's part of the story because okay. then they, uh, they, they then we embarked in the patient's compartment. I got top notch uh, uh, care from the uh, crew, mm -hmm. although they were shaken. And then. The story developed. We decided I have to go to the hospital for an X-ray to just in case. I know I, I, it was it wasn't unnecessary. I felt it. I was clear and didn't fade out. Nothing. I had a little scratch, few drops of blood, but it is better to check it for all uh, for all parts. For me. Of course, because if there was something untreated, it's the head, it's the brain. If it's damaged, it's not so good. I think we agree on that, and uh, especially also for the uh, for the crew to keep them safe, uh, so that there that I don't have to claim any. Uh, compensation from them because that that I didn't want because it's an accident. Mm -hmm. It was an absolute horrific situation right. for the driver because if this is a hatch, let's make it ha a bit more than half an inch plywood darkened because the the booth was old. The uh, the hatches were with the Narrow side, you 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 see it yes. narrowly, uh, and no light, no reflective stripes, nothing, and the crew obviously had to look to all of the uh, childs of any age. Childs, because we also had uh, quite a bunch of uh, let's say uh, people with a certain level of hot wine. So okay. Then an, a relief crew from the uh, from the uh, uh, medic post arrived, and uh, an bit older colleague of the crew take took over, and then they asked me if yeah, I feel fit to drive a part of the way to the hospital in the cockpit. Why? There was the other incident. 
the, the original incident where the ambulance want to go. So we had to pick up that incident. During this time, uh, they changed the driver. And the driver then was a bit more experienced and let's say also a bit more bold because then he used the horn. And in Germany we have two horns, uh, uh, a bit more quieter and a really, really uh, loud one operated by pressured air. And the, he used the quieter one, no one moves, and then he said, okay, get lost. And he, pulled, uh, he switched on the louder one and he blasted away the people because with... 120 decibel, you get the road clear. Right. And during this time, we, we chatted about all, uh, a lot of things. One thing I particularly remember, because it's hilarious, we talked about the difference between the German Minister of the Interior and the U.S. American Secretary of the Interior, which is quite a difference. Uh, Germany German Minister of Interior is more like homesick in your terms. And uh, we don't have a Minister of Interior in US terms. That is uh, divided in other ministries in Germany, but that's just a side story. And it was such a nice uh, conversation and all the people in this ambulance were such a nice conversation so that I say, okay, if, if the people around in my association of the same head are quite the same yeah i join them because i i know i'm i'm a good driver i'm an, i'm experienced for more than 20 years now and i was always interested in first aid so but uh, somehow i bungled it and didn't do it and now i took the, this incident and said, okay, I go to the readiness group in my town. How much training is required to get this level of certification? Um, the certification I try to get is three months. Okay. And it is, uh, uh, in, it is a middle ground, but the difference between the middle uh, level and the higher level, non Non doc, non uh, trained medic med school uh, doctor is then three years. So what you've done is essentially, but you're not paid. This is like a volunteer position in case there's some sort of mass um, casualty event or mass disaster. You can help. Is that what this um, is? Not. Also, yes. There is another subdivision for that. It's called disaster relief. But uh, what I do is the ready group we we do the ready groups are doing voluntary work on different levels uh, blood donation they help out or uh, bigger football games we have Eintracht Frankfurt around here and uh, in the stadium they they are not only professionals but also voluntary uh, medics or medical so it's, it's hard to it's hard to translate because uh, with the with the term medic you in the US uh, uh, connect a different type of uh, let's say yeah it's, activities it's just... uh, training and this is not nearly comparable so I try to to, to describe it, but it's hard Sorry. Let me explain it just a little bit to, just to kind of give people watching if, any, if there's anyone here mm -hmm. in the States watching. So like uh, the American Red Cross has basic disaster training classes that you can take. And also in the state of California, they have what's called CERT training, which is community emergency response training. And those are given through the fire departments. Uh, like I did this after 9-11. Mm -hmm. It was about a seven or eight week course. Um where you learn basic first aid, you learn triage, you learn how to go through uh, collapsed buildings, 
and you were given a green helmet and a green vest and you are civilian volunteers but you did a, we did a lot of drills and instructing with the fire department to sort of learn what the fire department how we could assist them and again mm-hmm. and then you could get level one two and three in terms of your response it, yeah uh, without knowing the details but this sounds pretty much from at least uh, to get an idea mm-hmm. uh, there are at least gazillions of differences but it's around that what I want to do and actually I want to go to the uh, to the disaster relief unit uh, and become quite active because I say by myself if I do it I do it in I do it in uh, I do it full because it's it, it, I was in the youth organization of German Red Cross uh, three decades ago, mm-hmm. or three and a half decades ago, and then I lost contact. And yeah, so so you know, I go back. How far into the process are you? Well, I applied for membership, and now I I'm booked for the first. Uh, uh, for a first aid refreshment course, which is the basics, and from there I go. Okay. It's uh, it's um, uh, the the German Red Cross has a six month uh, trial period where the uh, where the ready unit or the units and the applicant. Uh, uh, learn each other to know and uh, decide if we can work together. So I'm very fresh in that course, but I continue in uh, going through that process because I found out that the group in my town are quite nice people. So, and to have something to do it, especially at weekends, sounds a bit better than just sitting on my not so uh, not so fat ours anymore. I, by the way, I've lost uh, nearly 62 pounds. Uh, good for you. Well, I think you bring oh. up a good point. It's like one of the things mm-hmm. I talk a lot about on this show is how people can get involved in their community. And being a mm-hmm. first responder, I think, is a great way to do that. And I would imagine that I know they have these in many cities in, in the United States, but just as you're pointing out, most countries have some type of version of this as does germany so mm. and uh, if you have a bit of time i may go in one other part because i did a bit of research and i found a um, most astonishing story i've ever heard uh, about uh, a man and a woman a couple who lost their son and after that, they revolutionized the whole uh, emergency response system in Germany. Oh, wow. So buckle up, fasten your seatbelt, go into the uh, virtual DeLorean, and we go back in the year 1969. In 1969, a young boy named uh, Björn Steiger lost his life because Back then, Germany had no emergency response system. Nada. We had a nine to five uh, uh, sick p- uh, transport system for sick people, but no treatment in the car, no equipment in the car, even no radio communication in the car. And so the accident happened. Björn Steiger laid on the floor, bes- uh, uh, on the ground beside the street, and it took nearly an hour be- uh, bes- uh, to- up until the ambulance, it even wasn't a real ambulance by today's standards, mm-hmm. arrived. And so he didn't die be- of the uh, injuries, he, didn't, he did die uh, because of shock. Right. The father, Siegfried, and the mother, Ute Steiger, said, no, no, not anymore, not on our watch. And they formed an association, and they annoyed the politicians. <laughs> That's what you have to do. 
over years. And then it's, it's mind blowing. They took a mortgage on their whole house and bought really ambulances. Back then, we had uh, 11 states in Germany and they bought 11 ambulances. Each state got an ambulance donated by the Bjornsteiger Association then. Today it's Bjornsteiger Foundation. And they didn't stop there. They bought radio equipment. They, they, they even uh, get the German authorities to implement a nationwide emergency call phone number 11-2 and 11-0. 11-0 is for police, 11-2 is for medical and other uh, emergencies like fire. Mm -hmm. Back then they hadn't. And it's astonishing. Um, I, I saw an interview with uh, the Steigers and they said they, said they asked for that uh, uh, federal emergency number, and they said we can't afford it. Typical. That's and, crazy. I mean, that's it's true here. I remember as a child mm -hmm. in the seventies that you had to dial zero and you'd get the operator, and then they would connect mm -hmm. you with police or fire. And that was in the nineteen eighties in America where they started the nine one nine eleven. You dial nine one one, and that would then get you to. Mm -hmm. And we had it uh, back in seventy three, glaube ich, nineteen seventy three, because. Uh, Siegfried Steiger phoned to the uh, local uh, phone authority and asked, hey, what do you need, uh, what money do you need to implement this number? And within 10 minutes he had the figure and then he go back to the uh, federal government and said, okay, that's the numbers, let's do it. And the, to, to quote, the answer he get, I quote, uh, Karl Kulinski was, so, what did he do? He didn't stop there. No. He go to the court and said, I sue the federal government of Germany for neglect. We have a special, uh, we have a special uh, law in our books. Uh, failure of aid, I think, is, uh, I tried to translate it which is, if you fail to aid someone, you could be punished, and rightfully so. And, and then uh, faith, or let's say, uh, destiny kicks in because there was a young uh, judge who took this case, in, although he know he had to dismiss the case due to, to procedural uh, things. So this trial couldn't happen, but he said, this is important. He invited a, he invited the press uh, new for Germany back then, and he had an oral trial, mm -hmm. knowing that he had to dismiss the case. But with this trial, he gained a public awareness for this case, and then the pressure rose. And they they got the number, mm -hmm. and so they did. But they didn't stop there. And now we come to the uh, now we now uh, Airwolf comes in. <laughs> yes, uh, the Schreiders also took this. I think their second mortgage to buy an emergency transport helicopter, a fully equipped. So the Steigers not only got us ambulances and a federal uh, disaster uh, uh, emergency call number, they also founded the air ambulance system in Germany. Wow! And they financed one, the first or one of the first uh, uh, ambulance helicopters. In another interview. Uh, the, the son said, he quoted his mother when she pointed up in the air and to the actual helicopter and said, there flies our house. Wow. So, you remember our, uh, your last uh, 
Sunday chat. I I sent you via chat. Uh, I will tell you the story. Why I tell you this story? Because a few people can change a whole country. Uh, meet the meet the Steiger family, and they continue their work today. Uh, Siegfried Steiger today is 90 years old and not even a bit tired and his son took over the work. He is now the head of the Björn Steiger Foundation and now these foundation in, in, in cooperation with the uh, German Ministry for let's say uh, international aid built a emergency response system cop, uh, copy of the German system in China and Sri Lanka, I guess. So you see, that's what is possible, and what is, and you in the US, you e even have a more developed culture of such things. So you, if you find the real people, you will get it. You will get it. It's only a matter of time. And persistence. Well, Kai, I really appreciate you telling us that story because it is amazing that these two people changed the entire emergency response system in an entire country. And how many, how many, I mean, it's how many hundreds of thousands of millions of lives have they saved since the 70s as a result of this? It's crazy. I, I, I just get goosebumps yeah. and I think about this again. I think it's not an exaggeration to say that the Steiger, Björn Steiger Foundation saved more lives due to their work than any other else. I, I believe it. And now, uh, a fun fact, how comes Airwolf in? Airwolf was a Bell 222 helicopter. And after the show ends, that particular helicopter was sold to Germany and flew as rescue helicopter in Germany. <laughs> the Airwolf helicopter from TV is not, it flew as a rescue helicopter in Germany. Yeah, I think that's unfortunately, it, it had a tragic end. It gave a it, uh, bad weather accident and that helicopter crashed. But he died in service. Wow. So well, Kai, I, I really... I really appreciate you sharing this story with us. First, mm. I applaud you for getting involved. And I, I just, uh, so many people that watch the show have told me all the different ways they've gotten involved. And then to share, stare the, share the story about the married couple who used this tragic thing, losing their son, to then help so many families not have to go through that. Um, which is really, and this is the thing I talk about on this show, every little thing you do can make a difference and we're seeing it. That's a great example. We're seeing little things. We're seeing AOC, what she's doing. We're seeing everybody that just, you know, donated $27 to Bernie Sanders now that he it, announced. It, it, Bernie runs again, I think. Uh, the point is, also, uh, although I also like Tulsi Gabbard and I follow her on her channel on YouTube where she goes to even tiny town halls and talks to the people. I predict there is a future US president, but I think you need the burn. Right now you need the burn. Yeah. I Although really... uh, if you if I if I remember it was a female president who cleaned up the mess when uh, Donald Trump come becomes first president at the Simpsons T V show. <laughs> yeah, I think that's I right. I think her name was Li Lisa. <laughs> Lisa Sims. Well, Kai, I really appreciate you first supporting the mm. show. I appreciate you taking the time, and I know it's 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 late there. I got to go do a show myself here in Chicago. Um, so everybody out there watching this story, I hope it motivates you to realize that. Uh, one or two people literally can make the difference and all of you supporting this show and spreading the word and getting involved in your own communities and waking people up is that's going to be the mm -hmm. difference so 
Uh, please like, uh, subscribe, and share these videos out there. Go to the Patreon for $25. Uh, we can talk uh, at uh, 2, 3 in the morning German time if you'd like. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, and of course, all my tour dates are at GrahamElwood.com. Kai, thank you so much again. Um, and uh, ausgezeichnet. And, uh, <laughs> I, I, I like our conversations. It's, it's every month, it's a highlight. Good. Well, good. Thank you for doing it. And uh, everybody out there watching, you two can make um, Gotham great again. Auf Wiedersehen. Auf Wiedersehen. Have a nice show, Graham. Thanks, brother.